Welcome to this service at Faith and Victory Church. This is the place to come to receive your miracle from God. Now, let's join our service already in progress. Praise God. Well, go, let's go ahead and open our Bibles. And uh, if you get to the right place, you know you're hearing from God. Let's go to the third chapter of the Gospel of John. Hallelujah. We're thankful to God for the plan of redemption. Thankful that he did not leave us lost in the state of sin. And although that man rebelled and, and, and rejected him, and last week if you were with us, you know, Sunday morning and Sunday night, you would have gotten some of the foundation we were covering. We're not going to go back there this morning. We're going to talk about, though, however, this morning, uh, we're ministering along the lines of the subject of the new birth, what it means to be born again. Uh, if you grew up in church, you probably heard the term saved, um, you know, got right with God. There's a lot of terms we use in the church, but they all narrow down to this. You must be born again. Hallelujah. John, the third chapter. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. And Jesus answered and said unto him, now let's, let's kind of think about this. What Jesus says to him has nothing to do with what he said. See, that's, I believe that we as Christians should be led by the Holy Ghost on how to minister to people. Amen. Let the Spirit of God bring things out of our mouths that minister to the people. Regardless, of, let the people try to get you into discussions and arguments have nothing to do with where they are. And we want to address where they are. Amen. I mean, how many of you ever gone to somebody before you got saved and said, uh, where did God come from? You want to be philosophical. You know, and there's a scripture in the Old Testament that says he came from the north. And, uh, you know, you want to, you know, uh, how can God, you know, philosophical stuff gets you philosophical answers. Amen. Your problem isn't philosophical, it's spiritual. Amen. Man's problem is spiritual. Amen. So Jesus answered and said to him, verily, verily, that's old King Jimmy for, I'm, I'm giving you a solemn oath. Okay? Uh, I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Now, let me say something here, folks. Jesus said, everybody say Jesus. Anybody know who Jesus is? Jesus is the second person of the Godhead, the first begotten from the dead, the Son of God, came into the earth, was made flesh, and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory as the only begotten of the Father. Glory to God. He is God's Son. He is God. Amen. And he said, now what he didn't say, we can read a lot of this, what he didn't say. He didn't say, except you join a local church, you not you see the kingdom of heaven. He did not say, unless you shake the preacher's hand, you shall not see the kingdom of heaven. He did not say, unless you give your tithe to the local church, you'll not see the kingdom of heaven. Come on now. Amen. He didn't say, unless you, you know, do exactly what the pastor says, you'll not see the kingdom of heaven. What he said was, except the man be born again, he shall not see the kingdom of heaven. Amen. Of course, Nicodemus said... How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter his, the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Well, we know that's, that, that you can't do that. Amen. See, he, he, and Jesus, gets, Jesus marvels at this. He says, are you a teacher of Israel and don't know the answer to what I'm asking you or saying to you? Can you enter the second time in your mother's womb and be born? And Jesus said, um, verily, verily, a, another, a solemn oath. I say unto thee, except a man be born of water. Now, how I many know what happens when a woman gives birth? She breaks water. All right, let's talk about what? Natural birth. He, you know, listen, if you're not born into this world, now let me say this, that means all the demon spirits and all the fallen angels don't qualify for this. Amen. Only a human qualifies for this state. Amen. Okay? No other species on the planet. And if anybody tries to make man, you know, we're called what, the old Disney thing back in the 60s, the human animal. Hmm. We are a different class of being than anything on this planet. Why? Because no other entity on the planet has a spirit indwelling a physical body. Amen. And now you understand, born with a spirit. It's a distinct spirit. Now the pigs got demons in them, but they weren't, they weren't born with them in them. Amen. All right? <laughs> Only humans were created in the class of God. Let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the earth. Now, the funny thing about that, no, not funny thing, but the thing about that is this. When Jesus said that, I and mean, God said that, then he did this. The Bible says he breathed into man the breath of life. 
Remember, he formed him from the dust to the ground? But what was it? That was a body layer there with no life in it. And then he breathed into man the breath of life. The Hebrew and the Greek words for breath, wind, and spirit are the same in both those languages. So the word for breath, spirit, and wind in Hebrew is the same word. Same thing is true in Greek. The, the word pneuma can be translated wind, breath, or spirit. So let's say it this way. God spirited into man the spirit of life. God took, he said, let's create man in our image. He took of his spirit. Only, only creation that was created in the image of God was man. Right. The pigs weren't, the elephants weren't, the donkeys weren't, the cows weren't. No other, and, and all these people, you know, we got we to rescue the animals. We can kill the babies, but we got to rescue the animals. That's, de that's demonic thinking. If you want to abort babies and save the dogs, you give all your money to uh, rescue the animals and you, you support Planned Parenthood, you got a demon demonic thinking mind. Why? Wow. You're, 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 you're wanting to rescue something that's not created in the image of God, but kill that which is. Who would be behind that? God wouldn't be. <laughs> Satan is out to destroy anything that represents the image of God. And so God breathed into man, our spirit, this is over in Genesis chapter 1, 2, and 3, you can read that. You know, God spirited into man the spirit of life, and he became a living soul. Amen. That body got up off the ground. Why? And it was clothed in the glory of God. Amen. Man's spirit, his body had not known sin. His body had not been tainted by sin. And so, though he wasn't wearing clothes, the glory of God came out of him so brightly he was clothed in God's glory, much like Moses when he came out of the Mount, of Transfigur out of the Mount with God, getting the, the, getting the commandments God, we, you know, we always call it the Ten Commandments there was another 2,990 he got that day too, we just give the top ten Amen. okay hallelujah, when Moses came down they had to put a veil over his face because his face was brightening so, so brightly they couldn't look on it when Peter, James, and John saw the man of transfiguration, when Jesus' garments began to glisten as the noonday sun, that was just him letting a little bit of the glory out. That's how man walked the earth before. It wasn't until he sinned against God and he became spiritually dead, not ceasing to exist, but separated from God, that the glory went out and he knew he was naked. So these nudist colonies that say, we're just like Adam and Eve in the garden? No, you don't have any light covering you. Amen. And you need something covering you. Let me just tell you. Amen. Hello. People all run down to Florida, 80 and 90 years old, running around naked. They need something covering them. Can you say amen? amen. Hallelujah. Now, we had a, one of our relatives, half relatives, lives in Florida, and he'd go out in his backyard naked and cut the grass. If I lived next door to him, there'd be a 20-foot fence. Don't want to see that. Hallelujah. Ain't interested looking at that. I mean, you either get the glory or get some clothes, one of the two. Are you here? You're going home. Amen. All right. Hallelujah. So when man sinned in the garden, the light went out. Man became spiritually dead. Now, for those of you who haven't been with us, the word death in the Bible does not mean the cessation of existence. Okay? If you die physically, you don't cease to exist. It means your spirit and your body have been separated from one another, and the body without the spirit is dead. But you don't cease to exist. Spiritual death is the separation of the human spirit from God because God is life. So for somebody to be spiritually dead does not mean they don't exist. It means they're separated from God. And if you're not born again, you're separated from God. You're not in communion. You're not in union with God. But when you come once again into union with God, you're born again and you spiritually are alive that means your spirit is now in union with God Amen. the second death which is the ultimate death is when the lake of fire gives up the dead and Satan and all of his, his rebellious angels and all of those who would not receive Jesus Christ they're cast out into the second death means you're eternally separated from God Amen. never to know the presence of God again you don't want any of that Okay, and then just let me tell you, there is no back stairway to heaven. Amen. I know Zeppelin sang it, but it ain't there. Amen. There ain't no, you know what I'm saying? Anyway, find any stairway to heaven. There isn't one. There's one way, Jesus Christ. Amen. It's not a back staircase. Somebody say amen. amen. 
Hallelujah. Glory to God. And Jesus said, I say unto you, except the man be born again, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. He said, that which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Your entrance into this world through natural birth make, makes you a candidate to receive a spiritual birth or the new birth. Now, candidate meaning what? You must accept Jesus Christ. Amen. Muhammad can't do it for you, baby. Amen. Krishna can't do it for you. Amen. Let me tell you something. The Hindus got two million gods. Yeah, Uncle Charlie could be sitting in your living room. Your kids are starving, but he's a cow in the living room. And you're not going to kill him because it could be Uncle Charlie reincarnated, working out his stuff to reach that state where he can get fixed. Yeah. This, is one, this, is your, this is your shot, this life. That's why it's imperative on the church to preach the gospel to every creature and give people the opportunity. And they said there's 43% of the world's population. There are over 7 billion people on the earth right now. And it means unreached. It doesn't mean that 57% are saved. It means that 43% have never heard. That gives us somewhere in the neighborhood of 3 billion people that have never heard. Now, of that 57% that have heard, only a certain percentage are born again. We've got a job to do. And we don't have time to be Mickey mousing around with trying to figure out how much sin we can get away with so that we can you know, go tell everybody, you can get away with sin and come to God. Now, when Jesus went to the, he told his uh, disciples to go out and preach, here's what he said. Go into all the world and preach the gospel. Now, and then he tells them this. He says, tell them to repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Now, most of you, if you're, if you're people here this morning and you're not born again, Jesus Christ is not your Lord, you figured out by now that it just ain't working real good not having Jesus in your life. Amen. That's what I came to. I finally figured out one day, it ain't working. No, you want to you get drunk, you want to get high, you want to indulge yourself in, in some activity to placate your mind so that you don't have to think about the fact that it ain't working. But when you lay down at night and when you're in the quiet of quiets, when there's nothing else going on around you, there's something on the inside of you that is empty and it is void. And I can tell you what it is. You are void of the presence of God. And until man has God's presence once again in his spirit, he will never be happy. There will always be a void. And it doesn't matter how much money you have. It doesn't matter if you drive a Bentley. It doesn't matter if you drive a Mercedes. It doesn't matter if you've got a $50 million mansion. When you do not have Jesus Christ in your heart, you are void on the inside and empty of the life of God. And nothing you will do will ever satisfy that Amen. until you come to him. Amen. There was a rich man, rich young ruler. Remember the Bible said? He came to Jesus. And he said, Master, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus looked at him and said, well, what do you see? What do you think the Bible says? I'm going to paraphrase a little bit. What do you think the word says to you? The, the, uh, and he said, well, to love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, your strength, and your neighbor as yourself. He said, you've well said, for on this hinge all the law and the prophets. But one thing you lack, go sell everything you got, give it to the poor, and cut, take up your cross and follow me. What was Jesus telling him? Your riches will never satisfy you. All that you've gained in life are not the answer. Now get rid of it all because you tried, and you see, you got to understand the story import behind this. You've tried to satisfy yourself with, 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 with accumulating things. Get rid of all that because it'll never do it. Follow me. Now, church history teaches us. Remember, the Bible says he went away being sad because he had what? Much riches. But church history teaches that rich young ruler ended up being the man named Barnabas in the Bible, the co-companion of Paul. And so remember Paul and Barnabas, Paul, Saul and Barnabas. Mm -hmm. History teaches that he ended up being him. Wow. At some point, he realized that he had to, he had to have Jesus. Right. And you can be clinging to things in life. And even, listen, Christians, if you're thinking you're going to get happy now that you got born again, and if you can just get enough money, you're going to be happy. You're, you're looking the wrong place. Amen. Oh, in the Old Testament, it says this. As my soul, as the deer panteth after the water, so my soul longeth after thee as in a dry and thirsty land. The heart of man must pant after God, must be consumed with the presence of God, be consumed with being filled with God all the time. We're giving churches now with brew, brewing hymns. Happening in Greensboro. It's happening all over the country right now. Come in on a, on a night, they're all going to sing hymns and drink beer. 
Now that, Jerry, that's my same reaction. That dumbfounded look you got right now, that's what I had. Church is that we could drink wine. Church is saying, you know, you can live any lifestyle you want to live. Just come to our church. Right. Repent. Yeah. You have to yeah. turn from how you're living yeah. and turn to the living God and let every unclean thing in your life be washed away. Yeah. The Bible tells us in Hebrews, the 12th chapter and the 14th verse, that without holiness, no man shall see God. Right. You have to be holy. Now, you can't make yourself holy. How do I get holy? Give your life over to Jesus. Here he is. Follow peace with all men and holiness with which without no man shall see the Lord. God wants your life. But God is a holy God. And these, 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 these sermons that people are preaching and these mantras are putting into the churches that you can live any way you want to live. <clears throat> you can live in any kind of sin you want to live in because God's grace will just let you go to heaven anyway. God says you've got to be holy. Why? Because he's a holy God. And I want to tell you this morning, if you're not born again, you're not holy. Amen. That's not a, that, see, here's, here's a good thing. You're not holy, but I know the one who can make you that way. Amen. And that's the answer. Amen. See, a lot of times we go, well, that's hate preaching. That's not hate preaching. You know what hate preaching is? Keep living any way you want to. That's like standing on, you know, about 20 years ago, I guess it was, uh, the, uh, the um, I-40 bridge over the Arkansas River. The guy was navigating with a tugboat. He fell asleep or something at the wheel and ran right into the pylon and dropped the bridge right in the water. And cars were just going, shoo, shoo. A good thing it was late, late uh, early, it was really early morning, like 4 or 5 o'clock in the morning. If it had been regular rush hour, you don't know how many, car, how many cars would have gone there. And there was a guys down there fishing in the river. And they were just watching this happen. They, they were hollering and screaming. And finally one of them goes, oh, get the flare gun. And they shot some flares. And one of them finally landed on the road. And when it did, the cars could see that the bridge was out. Because it didn't collapse up. It collapsed down. And I've been over that bridge myself so many times, it's not even funny. Right. I've gone over that bridge before and after since they rebuilt it. They rebuilt it in just a few months. A miracle of, of, of architectural design to get it built that quick. But it just dropped it. Now, if you've been up there on that bridge and going like this, well, you can do anything you want to and go to heaven. That's how, that's how that is. You just run, let the people run right off the life of bridge or go to hell. But you see, those who know, see, they're not in love. Not, they're not, people not trying to impede you, not trying to tell you you can't do something. That's not love. The people who were trying to get, the, get them to stop cared about the people. They finally got that flare on the road, and, and somebody saw it, and they slammed on brakes, and then a few other cars, truck to trailer, slammed and, 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 and jackknife, and it started stopping all the traffic. Nobody else went off the bridge after that. If you love people, you're going to be shooting flares to warn them. You're not going to be telling them it's all clear. Go ahead. Amen. And these, some of the stuff that people are preaching now about you can live any way you want to live, that's just saying go ahead. There's nothing wrong up ahead. Go ahead. Just go ahead. Just run off the bridge. It's okay. That's not love. You may not like hearing that you're going to go to hell if you don't get saved, but my love for you has to demand that I have to tell you, to warn you, the bridge is out ahead in your life. I said the bridge is out ahead, out ahead in your life. And you're going to run roughshod right off that bridge, right into the water, and the destruction will be your end. But God so loved the world, here in John 3.16, that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. God knew the world was running off the bridge. And he sent a redeemer to tell you, you don't have to run off the bridge of life. Amen. Hallelujah. Come to Jesus. Give your heart and repent. Now, that doesn't mean, doesn't mean just to be sorry for what you've done. It means you have a complete change of life. Let me say this. If you're doing drugs, if you're shooting up, if you're drinking, if you think getting that 24-pack that of Miller on Friday night and getting another one on Saturday afternoon and getting you know, a 12-pack Sunday night because you're going to ease off to go back to work on Monday, your life is good. Your life is not good. You're, you're, just, you're just trying to uh, put a Band-Aid on what's wrong in your heart. You're not satisfied. But if you get drunk enough, you get inebriated enough, or if you shoot up enough, or you get high enough, you don't have to think about it because you're in an altered state. If you're out there having enough sex, you think sex is going to fix it. Ask Badger Johnson what that did for him. He had sex with over 20,000 women. And then he had to let them all know through the media and through the press and every way he could that, you know, I have AIDS. That'll mess up your morning. <laughs> 
in an evening too, in the next three weeks. Can you imagine all the 20,000 women when they heard the news report? Magic Johnson has HIV. Messed up their night. I'm sure they did too. And yeah, that's right. See, it didn't bring satisfaction to life. Jesus brings satisfaction. The void that you have in your heart is only be filled by the master himself. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Well, <clears throat> so you need to be holy. You can't be holy in yourself. How does this happen? Glory to God. First of all, the, the new birth takes place through some acts of God. One is justification. Justification is a, is a term meaning that your legal standing before God. God is the judge of the whole world where everybody stands guilty and condemned, but is acquit, you're acquitted and declared righteous by the redemptive work of Christ. When you're born again, how many of you have ever heard this term? Sometimes preaching on, sal on salvation, there's none righteous, no, not one. We're all, our righteousness is just filthy rags, and they go on. See, that's, that's half the truth. That's where you are before you get saved. Go over there, Romans chapter 3, I think. If it's not, we're close by. We'll, we'll, get, we'll get to it from... Yeah. <laughs> Trying to find exactly where that... I'm over here in Romans chapter 3, verse uh, 10. Okay, thank you. As it is written... There's none righteous, no, not one. There's none that understandeth. There's none that seeks after God. They're all gone out of the way, altogether become unprofitable. There's none that do good, no, not one. They're out, the throats are up in sepulcher. With their tongues they've used deceit, the poison of asp is under their lips, whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. They're swift to shed blood, destruction and misery in their ways. And the way of peace they have not known. There's no fear of God before their eyes. Now, this is a pretty sad state, but that's where you are without, without Jesus. I'm glad Paul kept writing. I said, I'm glad Paul kept writing. What does it do? He establishes who, where you are if you don't have Jesus, but he doesn't leave you there. Amen. He gives you the answer to get out of that mess. Amen. Are you here? Glory to God. Verse 23. For all have sinned. Well, let's back up. Let's back up. Verse 21. Now, all the, the righteousness of God without the law is manifest, being witnessed by the law and the prophets, even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all that believe, for there is no difference. They was writing to the Jews uh, at this time, so he's saying the Jews and the Gentiles both are made righteous through faith in Jesus Christ. Now remember, just a few verses before, he's talking about there's none righteous, no, not one. Our righteousness is filthy rags, there's poison on your tongue, you don't do good, don't seek after God. But he didn't leave us there. Amen. And I want to tell you, if you don't have God, that's where you are, but you don't have to stay there. If, if, you're, if you're without Jesus, let me tell you, that is where you are, but you don't have to stay there. There's a righteousness that's been revealed that you can come to him, and you can be born of him, and you can leave that other stuff behind. Glory to God. Are you here going home? Amen. For all of sin and come glory to God being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Glory to God. God made a way out. And see, that is the good news. The good news is not that God accepts and affirms you just like you are. That's the terms we're using in church now. Acceptance and affirmation. No matter how somebody's living, we accept and affirm their gifts. That's not what Jesus said do. He said tell them to repent. Amen? And then you accept and affirm their new place in Christ, not what they were before. If you're living in sin, God doesn't accept that. Sin cannot come into the presence of the holy God. Amen. Well, how do you get there? You come and take off your righteousness. You put on the righteousness of 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. Amen? For, you know, for he, uh, go there. Look at it there. I'm getting started off on the wrong foot there. Verse 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Then you go down to verse 21 and it says this. For he who knew no sin was made sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. What happens in the new birth? You take off those, righteous, those rags of filth. You take off the lying tongue. You take off everything that Romans chapter 3 verses 10 through 15 or 16 describes. And you put on the cloak of righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And now you can come before the presence of God justified. Amen. Just 
as if I'd never sinned. Clothed in Jesus' righteousness, holiness walks into the presence of God. God loves you. God has made a way. Yes, let me, let me say this. Satan was, hell was never intended for man. Hell was a place designed for, the, for Satan and the fallen angels who rebelled against God. But honey, if you're hooked up with him, when you die, that's where you're going. Amen. And you don't have to. Don't have to. The good news is, you don't have to. Amen. The good news is, you, Satan doesn't, and listen, this, this is the most, most wonderful thing in the world. He can't make you not get saved. If you make a decision that you want Jesus in your life, there is nothing in the world that Satan can do to stop you. Amen. Jesus said, come unto me all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. He didn't say you wouldn't have a yoke. He didn't say you would be burdenless. He said it was light. What do you mean? What does he mean by that? Well, how many know what a yoke is? Who doesn't know what a yoke is? How many are just not going to raise your hand no matter what I say? Okay. I just wanted to know. At least three people were honest. Ben, you're on the camera. Keep your hands down. All right. Yoke is a, is a farming implement used to tie a team of animals together. Beast of burden. Horses, you know, draft horses. You know, your Clydesdale, your Gypsy Varns, you know, the big, uh, your, um, uh, Belgians, the big old draft horses, you'd put yokes on them that made them walk together. They couldn't walk ahead of each other. You put them on oxen. You put them on different types of beasts of burden, and you well, they yoke them together. And they had to walk together. So Jesus said, my yoke is easy. What's he saying? He's the Clydesdale. You're the miniature pony. <laughs> Guess who's doing most of the work? You got to walk with him because my burden is easy. You got, a, you got the big old draft horse. You're just a little pony going along for the ride. But you got to walk with you. You can't just stop and get drug. He didn't, he didn't make you go. All right? You got to go with him. Have y'all got that picture in your head? Okay. <clears throat> I, think, I think Belgian, personally, I think Belgians are some of the prettiest draft horses there are. I love the color. You know, of course, the Clydesdale, y'all all know them as the Budweiser horses. All right? You know? Uh, you've seen Clydesdale ever since your whole childhood on Christmas pulling the, pulling the Budweiser cart. Well, Jesus isn't pulling the Budweiser cart. He's not showing up here with a Budweiser cart. We're not having beer and hymns this afternoon. Just want you to know that. Ain't going to happen. Well, it gets people into church. You know, we, you know, well, Jesus didn't say, go out and get them drunk and bring them in. I'm telling you this morning, if Jesus Christ is not your Lord, you need to repent. You need to accept him as your Lord. You need to come to the place for holiness where you can stand in his presence. And he's, listen, he's made the way. You don't have to do a whole lot. You don't have to stop. You listen, well, pastor, I love to cuss. You don't have to cuss, stop cussing to come to Jesus. But I can tell you, if you come to him and leave saved, you're going to want to stop. Right. He'll change your want to. Come on now. You don't have to stop shooting up to come to Jesus. But once you've come to him, you can quit start shooting up. You don't have to do that anymore. Amen. He'll empower you to overcome everything that you, that you give to him. When you say, I come and I give my life to you. Now when you face those circumstances, you're not bound. Yeah, I got to. I just got to. I got to obey my master, the needle. I've got a new master. Oh, glory to God. You're not my master anymore, heroin. You're not my master anymore, cocaine. You're not my master anymore, marijuana. You're not my master anymore, beer. Or if you're uptown, Chardonnay. <laughs> They're no longer your master. You've come to the master of your soul. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. And he's not a taskmaster. He's not evil. He's not going to put pressure on you. He's not going to crush you. But he's always going to be lifting you up. And he's always going to be raising you up. And he's always going to be there in the time of trouble. You could turn to him and say, Lord, master, I need help. And he says, I'm here. I'm the friend that sticks closer to the brother. I'll never leave you and I'll never forsake you. Your friends might leave you. Your family might leave you. Your wife or your husband may leave you. Everybody that you know may leave you. But Jesus will never leave you. He'll be right there. And he's not there to make you go under. He's there just like when Peter went out walking on water and began to sink. He said, Lord, Master. And Jesus took him by the hand. And guess what? Jesus didn't drag Peter back to the boat. 
Peter wasn't in the water going. How many, anybody ever water skied? And got pulled over on the skis and forgot to let go of the rope? It's like stupid, let go of the rope. And boat's going, yeah, because they're, they're getting you out of the water. And they're just flooring it. And you got up too quick. You know, you didn't, you didn't, stay, you didn't keep enough tension on the rope. And you went straight over forward. And you're hanging on going. Blah, 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 blah. And they're in the boat going, let go of the rope. <laughs> Dummy. You have to lake by the time you get done. Well, Jesus didn't grab Peter and drag him back to the boat. The Bible says they walked back together. And even after you come into the kingdom, you may get in a place that looks like you're sinking, but Jesus will take your hand and you'll walk it out together on top of the water. Glory to God. You must be justified by him. It's a work. It's his redemptive work. He has made the way for you to come into the kingdom by having it declared you're justified when you come to God. The price is already paid. Anybody ever had a debt you couldn't pay? Amen. Can you imagine going to court? Somebody's taking you to court because they want their money. They're going to take you to, to claims court. And you get there and the judge looks in and says, well, I, Mr. So-and-so, I, I'm, um, I don't know what to say, but here's a, here's a letter from somebody. We don't know who it is. But your debt's been paid. Now, once that's, once, and he goes, debt paid. There's nothing the person that brought you to court can do about it. They can't, well, I, I want him to pay it. No, it was already paid by somebody else. Amen. There's nothing, there's no accusation. He can't bring them back to court over it. He can't demand that they pay. He can't possess their goods. There's nothing he can do because it's already been paid. Amen. <clears throat> Glory to God. You need justification. Next, we need, you need to repent. Come to God. We've already talked about being repentant. But when you come to Jesus, you have to repent. I give my life to you. Amen. You're not righteous on your own. You receive God's righteousness. It's revealed through the word of God. Then when you come to Jesus and he declares you righteous, and you have repented of your sin and say, Lord, I come to you. At that point, the Holy Spirit comes into your heart and we experience regeneration or the new birth. The Holy Spirit comes to your spirit and God's life once again, just like in the Garden of Eden, when God breathed into man the breath of life, the Holy Spirit joins to our spirit. And once again, the life of God enters our spirit and we're called born of God, born again. At that point, let me say something. You hear people calling us sinner, old sinner saved by grace? You were an old sinner, and you got saved by grace. But now you're the righteousness of God in Christ. I know in, the, in, in some churches, they, they, they take certain people and call them saints. If you're born again, you're a saint. I ain't been acting like one, neither did they. The new birth makes you saint. Come, coming from the word, you know, holy, means sanctified or separated. When you get born again, you've been separated from the kingdom of darkness. The Bible says this, that we're translated out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. When the Holy Spirit overshadows your spirit and the new birth is experienced in your human spirit, you're no longer under Satan's dominion. You become a child of God and you're under God's dominion as a child of God. I know I grew up and I remember... My, my pastor in my Pentecostal church that I came out of, teaching our Sunday school class one day, he was quoting one of his professors from Bible school. Well, fellas, you're going to have to sin a little every day. <laughs> and then he was, he was talking about looking at women. So if you're going to, the second look is a sin, so take a good long look the first time. <laughs> and I remember hearing that. And I remember thinking, I had just gotten saying, I thought, are you kidding me? <laughs> you can get to so much sin on the good long look the first time, you don't need the second one. Amen. Jesus said, look at a woman to lust after her. You committed adultery already. Take a good long look the first time. Pretty woman walking down the street. Pretty woman. I mean, mercy. Oh, You ain't getting no mercy on that. You got to go repent. Amen? 
Y'all have heard Pretty Woman before, haven't you? Yeah. I didn't need that. Now that song's already in my head. Turn the album over and get the gospel side of that album. How many remember, how many remember the, the flip side of the, one of the Commodore's last albums, the, the flip side was a gospel album. Some of y'all, I had the album and I turned it over and one of them was Jesus is the healer and, and he, this was, it was awesome, awesome. I mean, it was an awesome song. Then you got Brick House on the other side. That just messed you up. Don't, 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 don't. I mean, oh, Lord. I want Jeff to sit on the back row from now on. He's messing my sermons up. Stop. The, the, Holy, the regeneration is the inward work of the Spirit of God to impart God's life into the spirit of man. This is the new birth. When the Spirit of God baptizes us into the body of Christ. Baptism and water comes after you're baptized into Christ. He immerses us into the body of Christ as new created beings. Glory to God. And there begins where the Bible says that we're to walk in the newness of life. When you're born of the Spirit of God, there's a whole new way to live. God's life in us makes us new creations. God's life in us empowers us to go by the brick house and say, uh-uh. I ain't doing it. Hello? She might be fine, but I ain't going to see how fine she is. I just can't help it, Pastor. I'll see if we're, no, uh-uh. See, now, when you start living out the life of God, you can say no. Why? Because the Bible says in the book of Romans that sin hath no more dominion. That means that it no longer has the right to rule over your heart. Amen. We have now subjected ourselves to the dominion. How many know where the word dominion came from? The domain of the king. The domain of the king. Okay? Kingdom, king's dominion. Domain, the domain of the king. Dominion. We have the dominion over our bodies to say no. Amen. You can look at heroin and say no. You can look at alcohol and say no. You can look at drugs and say no. You can look at uh, perversions and say no. Because the Lord of your heart is the God of heaven and earth. And here is the true grace of God. His Dominion in your heart empowers you to live the way that a holy God demands. Amen. That strength that comes out of his presence is his grace. And if you all apply that to your life. See, some people teach that grace allows me to live any way I want and still go to heaven. No, grace empowers you to live the way that God wants you to live. And live in dominion over the dictates of your former life. Satan shall not lord it over you. Sin shall not lord it over you. Because you've come to know God and his spirit has regenerated your spirit. And once again, into the likeness and image of God. And you can, once again, you have dominion over the earth. And you can subdue every evil task and every evil work that tries to come to your life. You can say no. This morning, you don't have to say no to get rid of it, to get saved. But, you know, I just can't help it. I've tried and tried and tried not to do this. Come to Jesus. Amen. Let the life of God enter your spirit. Yeah. Let the nature of God indwell in you. Let the dominion of the King of kings and the Lord of lords take root and rule in your heart. And that, where Romans says, sin that shall not have dominion over you or shall not lord it over you, no longer can it make you do what you used to do. You don't have to follow after that anymore. You can follow after Jesus. We trust that you were blessed by the Word of God and the flow of the Spirit of God in this service. If you would like to contact us, please write us via email at office at fbc.org or using our mailing address, PO Box 7752, Greensboro, North Carolina, 
2417417. If you would like to contribute to our ministry, please go to our website at www.fbc.org and click on the Giving Online button. Thank you, and may God richly bless you for your giving.